Good day, everybody. Here is a photo of Yankee greats Lou Gehrig on the left, Joe DiMaggio on the right. And from 1938, and this was the last year Gehrig was really good, unfortunately. He had a two ninety five average, 29 home runs. He had 114 runs batted in. And this was a young Joe DiMaggio beginning to come into his own 324 hitter, 32 homers, 140 RBIs, 21 strikeouts the whole season. Think about that for a minute. 21 strikeouts the whole season in a day and age when players strike out more than 100 times in a season and doesn't seem to matter to them. 1938, the year the Yankees won their third of four straight World Series. They swept the Cubs that October. And although the Yankees would win that fourth straight World Series in 39, that's the year things took a very sad turn for Gehrig. He had to end his streak of 2,130 consecutive games as ALS, the disease commonly known as Lou Gehrig's disease, took its toll on him, turning Gehrig not only into much less of a baseball player, but on the physical side, much less of a person couldn't hardly do anything. Without having problems, that's how debilitating Lou Gehrig's disease is. And yet on the 4th of July, back in 39, Gehrig, who was, for the most part, a shy person, wasn't even planning to speak that day, but delivered... One of the greatest speeches, maybe the greatest speech in sports history, the luckiest man on the face of the earth. If you haven't heard that speech before, I certainly hope you do sometime. And DiMaggio played that day. It was a double, there was a doubleheader at Yankee Stadium that day between the Yankees and the Washington Senators, and DiMaggio played that day. In the first game, he went one for three. Second game, three for five. He... Drove in a run and scored two runs on his own. And DiMaggio actually lived long enough to see Cal Ripken Jr. break Lou Gehrig's record of consecutive games played. DiMaggio even spoke at the ceremony honoring Ripken and was as classy as could be. Calling Ripken a one-in-a-million player and said that he earned the record. So that's Gehrig and DiMaggio for you, at least late in Gehrig's career, early in DiMaggio's career, 1938. Very fortunate to have found this photo, and you never know what you're going to find sometimes. I mean, this was at a postcard show, and I managed to find it, managed to purchase it, and now one of my favorite photos, Lou Gehrig and Joe DiMaggio, two of baseball's all-time greats. And this one photo from 1938, who knows how many of these are in existence. Thanks to all of you for watching. Talk to you soon. Take care, everyone.